Well, yeah, me, I, I don't support retaining Glover and right back. You see, I, my position has always been clear. You see, some people mis, mis, misinterpret my position of when Milo named the squad, and I said, I have confidence in the squad. You see, when you are a former vice, uh, a former vice president of the FA, yeah. and you have been the head of the Black Stars, when a coach announces squad, the only thing I can do is to give him my support. I cannot be criticizing the coach. But when you go to the tournament, and for my my estimation and my observation, I can tell clearly that Milo was the reason why we failed to qualify to the next stage. Why? This time, you see, to prepare for a tournament, a lot of factors comes into play. First is the pre pre tournament campaign, and then second is the campaign itself. Okay. Now, the pre tournament campaign, the venue of the campaign itself is also a factor. Okay. Now, you have players coming from the cold weather in the winter season coming to assemble in uh, in Qatar of a 22 degrees, which is also not hot. And they're ending up to play at a tournament where the, the temperature is over 32 degrees. They see this whole preparation was wrong. And so if you have even undertaken that, that, that kind of preparation, where you took players from a 22 degrees to a 32 degrees weather, what do you do? Players who are coming from Europe and have actually played for 60, 70 minutes. Quickly, you do your substitution so you can introduce me fresh limbs. Milo will wait to at the fifth minute, at the sixth minute when he's down before he will take substitution. So for me, we lost, we lost by proper game management from a coach. I don't want to blame anybody. I blame the coach for the performance turned out by our, so our players. It gets to a time when football is science, when the human body gets tired. And it's, the, it's for that reason that FIFA, looking at what is going on, the COVID and all that, has given us the opportunity to change, make five changes. Why don't you take advantage of it? You wait till the last minute and then you make the substitution. And somebody is saying, that, oh, because we should let, wait for him to come. Yes. Those reports and coming to give us report, these are normal formalities. It won't change anything. The report of Milo will not change anything. What it's required of us as people, as people who run football, should see clearly that Milo of 2010, 2009 is not the same Milo we see today. Yes, he achieved everything that he has to achieve yeah. within Ghana. Yes, but after that, what next? Was 10 years or 11 years of Milo's departure from Ghana? What did, what did he do with all the teams that he went to? Tell me. So I have said that we have no business in bringing Milo back. But in any case, the authorities, the people in charge believe that no, we disagree with you. We think that we have to bring Milo. They brought him. So fast forward. The man has gone to fail. So I have to blame. I have already blamed them. So I don't need to come back. I'm saying that the man they brought is a disaster. Meanwhile, the president of the Ghana Football Association, Ket Okriko, has called for cool hairs, saying that if Ghana really wants to reach the apex of world football, they must be calm in their decision making. It's unfortunate. And OTA Ghana for, and uh, OTA Omar, I mean, you would, you would, but to admit, say, uh, look, they have every right to be very. And that is the president of the Ghana Football Association, Ket Okreku, who was speaking on our sister station, Asampa FM. That's how we wrap up sports on Joy News today with me, Muftar and Abla Abla. You can head on to my joyonline.com and read some more sports stories. <laughs>